welcome to Outlaw Gamer Radio, the official podcast of OutlawGamers.com. This is the show where we live to play and play to live. I'm Brent Adams, joined by a man who is happy to play the Beastmaster at your next Bachelorette event. And yes, you can keep the bearskin pants. It's Mr. Lord Baumgart and Lauren. What's up, Brent Adams? What's going on, man? How are you? I'm great, man. You're wrong, is what you are, actually. Why, they don't get to keep the bearskin pants? They do not get to keep the bearskin <laughs> That's exactly right. You are you are wrong. They do not. Mm. But you are happy to play the Beastmaster at their Bachelorette event. I mean, that's that's really the headline of that. That is the uh, that is the headline. You're right. I just want to be clear about where my clothes are going to end up. <laughs> oh, listen. The kind of money that these ladies are paying... I know where your clothes are going to end up to. That's a true story. You're right. Uh, so, <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, how's your week, man? Big week. We got lots. Of, we had we had the game awards. Uh, yeah, it was it was it was actually a great week. Uh, my birthday was last week. Happy birthday! Thank you. I appreciate. Which, that. by the way, did did I erroneously wish you a happy birthday a couple episodes ago? You did. Um, and strangely enough, I th- I think I must have lied about my birthday on Twitter or something like that because <laughs> I got I got a couple of happy birthday wishes like. One day in November on Twitter, people were like, "Hey, happy birthday!" And so I was like, "Hey, happy well, you birthday. got it." I, was you, like, I think that's Thanks. where I got it from. Was you got it on on the on our website in the yeah. activity feed? And I just I didn't even look at it. I just wished you a happy birthday. Right. And then, uh, like a couple days ago, when your birthday actually was, right. I saw the <laughs> and now <laughs> now I just realized I'm a dick and I didn't wish you happy birthday on Facebook. Uh, but I saw the the notification on Facebook pop up on my phone that was your birthday, and I was really confused. And I was like, "What?" Uh, yeah. And I wanted to call and ask you, and I realized that I wished you a happy birthday on the air two weeks ago. I am egg on my face. Well, I, I mean, it might not be your fault. I, like I said, I might have just lied about my birthday somewhere and forgotten that I had. But um, so, did you have a nice birthday? I did. I had a uh, I had a great birthday. It was a very fun time. Mostly, uh, mostly just spent at home chilling with uh, chilling with Shelly and with Zeely, and just getting some some very heartfelt uh, very appreciated well wishes uh, on facebook so i just want to say thank you to everybody who took the time to wish me a happy birthday it, for for whatever reason this year it just it was very it was very poignant um and and i, I really appreciate everybody who who was kind enough to just you know share their thoughts and all that so it was uh, it was a great time i had a great birthday that's and awesome did you get did you get any games no i i, I didn't get it i didn't get anything i i got uh, i got no presents at all uh except that my wife i, I got a couple of really fantastic uh, birthday cards one from my wife one from zeely and i understand that shelly you know had to do the actual writing on z's card but uh but z did quite a bit of coloring on it you know, so like it's got her personal touch, and I, <laughs> nice. I have to, I have to tell you that you know that 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 that's going to be one of those things that goes, you know, like in the safe that I I have, you know, for, for my entire life is my first my first birthday card from Z that from your cool. daughter. That's awesome. That, that was, is absolutely awesome. That was all the present I needed. I guess that's better than a video game. Yeah, slightly. Uh, you know, Brett, that actually reminds me. Yeah. Going to take a pause here for a second to ask you. Was it Esteban that gave me these? Correct. Uh, and it, did they come from Comic Con? Uh, yes, that's also correct. N- New York Comic Con, right? Uh, no, San Francisco Comic Con. San, San Diego, Francisco. excuse me, San Diego Comic Con. Okay, I'm going to take a second and thank him because I never yeah. did. All right. Um, that reminds me, I, I I did get a gift, Brent, that I want to say thank you for, though not on your birthday. This is actually very belated. <laughs> like, Who's giving you a gift on my birthday? <laughs> I think that's why you maybe didn't get one. What no, asshole no, no. is behind that? One of our illustrious listeners. Um, Brought, got me a gift from I believe it was San Diego Comic Con. Right, a couple of uh, Pop Games Borderlands um, figurines. Yeah, a handsome Jack, a gentleman claptrap, among a couple other little things uh, from San Diego Comic Con. And I just wanted I, I I had not said thank you yet, and I you forwarded them on to me, and I wanted to thank our listener uh, for getting those for me. They're f- freaking awesome, and I cannot wait to display them in my uh, in my new home pretty soon. So I just want to say a quick thank you. Shout out for that. Yes, well, that that's definitely worthy stuff to be thankful for. Um, something that you may or may not be thankful for. <laughs> nice segue. <laughs> moving into the garage, and our first story in the garage is uh, this the story that Sony is now going to offer a twelve month subscription, I guess, a, a twelve month package package for uh, for PlayStation Plus. That's going to cost a hundred dollars. No, 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 for PlayStation Now. Excuse me. Yes, PlayStation Now. 
that is going to cost a hundred dollars, which is something like it's it's almost half of like what it normally costs. Because isn't it usually like twenty bucks a month or something like it's that? It's a little bit. It's actually about forty five percent of the original cost. Right. Right. Um. So anyway, but the question remains. Yeah. Do you care? I don't know. See, I, like I tried to use PlayStation Now back when it was in beta, and it didn't work all that well. But I'm assuming that it's working a little bit better now. But I don't. I don't know. Like I haven't. I haven't tried. I haven't tried in you know h- however long it's been. Yeah, I, 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 I honestly, Brent, I put this. I put this on the docket because I'm genuinely curious to know if anybody is. Uh, using this service, if this is—I mean, this is a significant discount, obviously. Yeah. But I also—I I believe I tried it once too, and it worked like crap. And now I have uh, uh, no interest at all in doing it. I—I—I'm I, curious to know if anybody out there is actually using this service, or if this discount will get anybody to use this service. Yeah, I mean, like it's one thing to say it's one thing to save money on a service. It's another thing for the service to actually work. And I'm—I'm I'm hesitant. Like, I'm hesitant to hit them too hard for this, you know, because it could be like the whole OnLive thing. I mean, you know, like, OnLive was, was a joke for a long time, at least as far as I was concerned. You know, OnLive was a complete joke. And then, you know, suddenly one day OnLive worked for me and, and worked reasonably well. And, you know, it could be a similar kind of thing. Could be a similar kind of thing with this. So I, I'm hesitant to, to go too overboard with it. But I ought to try it out. You know, like, I've got PlayStation now. Like, it's built into my television. And... I've never even fired it up to, uh, you know, to see how it works. Yeah, but um, I don't know. I'd be I'd be interested to hear from somebody who's actually using the service. I would be too. So anyway, I guess you know, saving money is always good, and hopefully, you're saving money on something that actually works. Before we move on, we have a correction that we need to make. Oh yes. In relation to a story that we talked about last week, we were <laughs> my talking, mistake or your mistake? I can't I, remember. I think it was mine, but I, I can't. I can't remember. But anyway, we were talking last week about the story about this patent that had to do with load screen mini games that had expired, right? Yeah. And we mistakenly attributed the patent to Konami, and in fact, uh, the patent went to Namco Bandai. And some somewhere in the course of of reading the story and my lips reproducing. The, the the words uh, my mouth mutinied and <laughs> now here's the thing Brent if we find out that it was in fact me who said it and not you yeah are we gonna have to correct the correction next yes. week yes we will we will absolutely <laughs> have to correct that I think it was me though uh, I, 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 well, I I think that I'm the one who originally uh, I think that I'm the one who originally said it incorrectly and that and then you just you know repeated me. But it could have gone the either way. I mean, it could have gone either way. Like, to I be fair, though, I can't tell the difference between you and me. Some weeks. To be fair, it, you know, Konami so it, handsome. It would have been Konami if their lawyers hadn't forbidden them to do it. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Which brings me to my next story, Brent. Which is uh, the the story we're looking to is actually the winners of the video game awards or the game awards, excuse me. And officially. congratulations to almost all of them. <laughs> um uh and really uh, you know I, I we're not going to go through all the winners but i did want to i mean i i did want to at least talk about the game awards um I, I don't think either you or i kn- did you i was going to ask did you actually watch them i did not i watched I didn't either like i watched, I, the I watched pieces i watched pieces of them yeah that was me I watched the parts where Jeff Keighley um was talking about how um konami wouldn't let kojima come um right uh, perhaps I could have worded that better, but wouldn't let Kojima attend the Game Awards. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I did watch listen, a couple. Listen, I, I, I mean, like whatever he's into, man. Whatever he's into, you know. Like I we're going to talk about this in a minute. But I watched the Far Cry, P- P- Far Cry Primal. I watched yeah. the announcement of we'll talk about this too. Uh, Telltale's game, yeah. <laughs> um, so I did watch some stuff. Uh, I did not watch much because honestly, I, I, I couldn't bring myself to watch it. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if it's any better. We did talk about it. Um, uh, a little bit last week, you know, somebody people brought up in the conversation the Dice Awards, um, which mm. we did not talk about last week. But uh, I think we so, talked about the Dice Awards back when they happened, though, didn't they? Didn't no, we? no, but in the context of like just wanting a oh, right, uh, right, right, wanting right. a high quality award yeah, show, and okay, somebody yeah, one yeah. of the listeners wrote in the what comments, the Dice like, Awards? Yeah, 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 what are you guys talking about? I, I did see Rocket League win uh, best indie game and best sports racing game, which I guess means that the game awards weren't all bad. That's true. And game of the year went to Witcher three wild hunt, mm-hmm. um, which is action adventure I, game went to phantom pain. 
Uh, it did. So um, I could be happy about that. D- yeah. So, I mean, I, I think... What uh, about Splatoon, though? I mean, did anybody see Splatoon? I tell you, Call of Duty didn't see Splatoon coming. <laughs> Destiny sure as fuck didn't see Splatoon coming. <laughs> That's right. Um, I was surprised. You know, honestly, I was surprised that Best Mobile Handheld Game went to Lara Croft Go. Yeah, as opposed to Fallout Shelter. Yeah, I was a yeah. little surprised, too. Yeah, I... I, I uh, yeah, that was a little surprising, but... <laughs> Um. Anyway, I you know well, I, I felt like the gaming awards is a thing and yeah. it should be acknowledged on our show for sure. I haven't talked to a um, lot of people about it yet, as, in terms of um, in terms of like you know what it was like to watch and whether it was painful to get through and all that. Well, one of our listeners talked about how you know he feels like this is essentially kind of like an E three for the end of the year. Like the you know people watch it for the world premieres and and I don't disagree mm-hmm. with that and. Uh, to that end, Brent, we did get a uh, uh, we did get one premiere that I was not expecting. No, I wasn't uh, either, but I was very happy about and it. And I was watching this, and as it's unfolding, I'm thinking that looks a lot like Batman. That can't be Batman. How could that be Batman? Is that Batman? I can't believe it's Batman. And then, oh my god, it's behold, Batman! Telltale's doing Batman. I'm all about that, man. I, I mean, I can't remember. I can't remember. I think it, I think it might have been Esteban, but uh, but. I, I had, I, I mean, Esteban sent it to me first, is what I'm saying. I had several people, like, like my phone, like I started getting text messages, like one right after another, and they were all linking to this trailer. Yeah, I, I think Esteban is is the one who sent it first, though. And, um, you know, I was just like, Batman, Telltale, Batman, Telltale. I'm there. I'm so fucking there. And do you feel it all like telltaled out? I feel a little. I'm feeling a little Telltale fatigue, even though I haven't played. I didn't play Borderlands. Well, that's the thing. Like I haven't played a Telltale game since uh, since Wolf Among Us. Like okay, well, no, technically that's not true because I've started but not finished Walking Dead season two, um, which I did as well. But. But the I've, fact that I, you didn't finish it, I also didn't finish Wolf Among Us, and that kind of makes well, me feel like... But see, that that's your problem right there. Wolf Among Us is fucking amazing. I mean, it's fucking amazing, that game. And the, frankly, the, the thing, the, the idea that... The idea that Telltale is going to do a Batman game, I feel, and I could be wrong, and, and therefore bitterly disappointed as a result, but I feel like they are by necessity going to have to focus more on the detective angle detective of side of it. Yeah. Yeah. And that excites me because that's the one thing that I don't feel like the Arkham games have done all that well. I right, think it's they, much more about the combat. Yes. They, they've tried to do it. Well, they've tried to incorporate some aspect of they it. They never did. I don't, I don't feel. And, and like, I always kind of felt like this is kind of cool, but you know, if, if only it had been paid a little bit more attention, it could have been so much better. But I love the idea of I love the idea of it being a um, uh, maybe a more detective kind of based thing, or or like an adaptation of like you know like a really cool Batman story, you know, like Hush or the Long the Long Halloween or something like that. Yeah, indeed. Um, I, it'll be interesting to see. You know, you're I I know that I'm an idiot for not having finished The Wolf Among Us. You are. I think that am, am I correct that um, uh, Borderlands from Telltale Games was also very well received. Yeah, I mean, like every everybody that everybody that I heard from that was like recommending it to me said that it was it was a good time. Well, it'll be awesome to so. see. So another one, Brent, from the Game Awards, which uh, it just blew me away. And, and frankly, I, I'm actually afraid of. I'm genuinely. <laughs> this is. I'm afraid of this game. The way that I have sort of you stayed ought, away from. You it. ought to be afraid of how much money th- this game has to throw around. Like if this game decides that Lauren Baumgarten's going to play. They've got the money to make sure Lauren. Baumgarten I actually plays think this, this is the beginning. Uh, what, what what is it called in Ready Player One? The the Oasis. The Oasis. I think this is the beginning of the goddamn Oasis. Knowing watching Suits this, me. This is so. This is Star Citizen. Uh, this the, is the long time coming follow up uh, from Chris Roberts. Yeah, that's earned what something thirty plus million dollars in crowdfunding. I I think it's a hundred million at this point. <laughs> no, really? Is it really? <laughs> hang on, hang on. It's, uh, it's so, a lot. This is I don't know if this is the first time we've seen the the first person shooter gameplay Brent or not but uh this is all this is all from live play sessions and it is fucking ridiculous how wh- how amazing the space battles the first person shooting everything in this looks and they're building it in goddamn VR as well uh it, it, it's just it's a it's it, it's ridiculous it's a minute and four, 57 seconds of jaw dropping gameplay uh, just for uh, just just 
in case you guys were wondering, hey, how much money did Star Citizen raise? As of uh, November 2015, it's $94.4 million. That is ridiculous, dude. That's that's bordering like GTA money. So let's say it one more time, just, just so you understand. This game, through crowdfunding, raised $94.4 million dollars all right that is insanity that is insanity so the the beginning of the trailer brent says have you ever wanted a spaceship combat fps and eva all in one seamless experience yes yes Chris Roberts, I have. <laughs> yes um, although I, I do have to ask and i'm gonna embarrass myself by asking this yeah eva extra vehicle uh extra vehicular action action it's a it's a term that it's a term that NASA started using. Um, extravehicular activity. Act, extravehicular activity. So, yeah. it, it, the fact that it's in VR genuinely makes me think like I could get fucking lost in this thing forever. And it's not. It's like I, I don't even know. Like I, I'm not even sure where the game is at this point. Like you can buy in at this point. You can buy spaceships, and if you, I, I don't even know. I got to go look it up. I need this game. I, I'm gonna stop. I got to actually. I got to go, Brent. <laughs> I have to stop the show now. Uh, I I funded this game and I've not touched it yet, and not for like lack of wanting to, but just for like I told myself at the time, because I do this every time. Like I did this with like Daisy and like in like all these games where like I I crowdfund, I play the alpha or whatever when it comes out, and then like I never play the final game, <laughs> and like I know that the final game will be better. Like I know the final game will be better, and I'll have a great time with it. And but like I don't do it because it's like well I already played it I know what it's about or whatever, and I I had to like promise myself I'm like I'm not gonna do that this time like I'm gonna fucking wait for this game to be quote unquote finished before I play this time like I'm, I'm not, not gonna I, spoil I, I, I'm it I'm not for sure at what point this game gets finished and if there's a reason to I've been waiting too yeah. and at this point I'm not sure if I should keep waiting or not I uh, I feel like if I wait if you wait till the game's actually released. You're going to be behind like half the community who already knows how to take over the whole universe. <laughs> well, that's that's a consideration as well. But in any case, Star Citizen looks amazing, and uh, like I mean, you're right. I mean, like in my mind, Star Citizen really could be a fundamental kind of shift where it's not like Star Citizen is not just a game. Like Star Citizen is a hobby life unto itself. <laughs> I mean, like a, like you know? a, I mean, honestly. I, I don't. It's frightening well, to me. It's, almost, it's frightening. Almost Let's, like World of Warcraft is for some people. Like you know, like like are you a gamer? Well, no, not really. But I play World of Warcraft. You know, like forty hours a week. It's like okay, so yeah, I mean, yes, like, like that, yes, that kind of men, that kind of mentality where it's not like I don't really play video games as a whole, but I spend tons of time playing World of Warcraft. Like, like I almost think Star Citizen could kind of be like in that category of of pastimes. This is it. Is it's it's you're going to end up you're going to. I, I think people are going to end up making a real living feeding themselves off of this game. Uh, we'll find out. Yeah. Speaking of feeding yourself, uh, one of the things that we saw at the Game Awards is Far Cry Primal. There was a world premiere that they showed, and then they also released uh, on, on YouTube uh, a 10 minute gameplay walkthrough from Ubisoft. And we got to see Far Cry Primal. And as I inferred in the, uh, in the hysterical intro, of this episode of Outlaw Gamer Radio. Uh, the big headline here is Beastmaster. And I'm going to tell you, they really buried the headline on this one. If they would have just told me, like, six weeks ago, whenever it was that we first found out about this game, if this game was Far Cry colon Beastmaster, I would have already bought it. Okay? That's all they had to fucking tell me. <laughs> and... <laughs> For a second there, I thought you actually said if this game was Far Cry colon, as in it took place in the colon. Listen, Lauren, you've got to give these people room to grow. Okay, like there's, there's only so many more places. This I thought franchise. they were going to do like an inner space thing. Why not? Why not? <laughs> Sorry, please continue. It's a fantastic voyage, isn't it? Yes, um, let's, let's go back to Beast. Let's leave the colon and go back to Beastmaster. So anyway, but the big headline here is that uh, you're going to be able to tame beasts, saber-toothed tigers, woolly mammoths, dire wolves, and so forth. And uh, and we, we see this in the gameplay, and it becomes a really big part of, of of the game mechanics that they're showing off. Game looks great. I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's running on a high-end PC or something like that, probably. But it looked really nice. And, and certainly the, uh, 
the the beast taming gameplay is a, is a cool new thing for the series as opposed to animals only being a threat to your life. Uh, I think that we can all agree though that the best part of the gameplay by far is the moment where you unleash the bees. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot tell you. I cannot t- tell you how hard I laugh. Like my my daughter, I, I laughed so hard my daughter actually started crying. She was sitting next to me on the couch and it scared her. Like how hard I was laughing, but. He comes around. And he's like he's like throws like a bee bomb at the guy. He's like, oh yes, yeah. and then uh, and then the bees. I'm like bees. <laughs> <laughs> All I could think of was like Tommy Boy, and oh my god, something about that just killed me. It absolutely killed me. What'd you think, Lauren? Uh, I saw. So I thought. So I watched the the trailer that was released, thinking that I was getting gameplay. I watched yeah. the trailer that was released during the show. Uh, and, and it was clearly not gameplay, or maybe there was gameplay. Was gameplay cut in with other? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it was a trailer. It was a trailer. Right, it was a trailer with some yeah. gameplay cut into it. And it wasn't until actually a few several days later that I saw the the actual gameplay. And it's interesting because I've seen a lot of articles pop up on the internets mm. about um, about a, with espousing two very different viewpoints of Far Cry Primal okay. from the journalists. So, several of them saying this is exactly what the series needs for a refresh and a reboot, and some uh, some of them saying. Don't be fooled. This is just Far Cry dressed up in a different skin, but it's the same game again for the you know third or fourth time in a row. Yeah, um, which was interesting. And I found so when I watched the trailer that was um, presented at the Game Awards, I was extremely excited. And I thought, which I haven't really been by the by the teasers that I've seen before. I thought this is fucking cool. You control the beasts. This is really cool. Mm-hmm. When I watched the gameplay, I, I sort of ended up by the end of the nine minutes. Somewhere in the middle of the road. Right. Um, I, I think it's a really cool idea. I like the fact that you can turn into the, you know, you can call the owl and do recon. Yeah. Um, but at the, but when you watch it, at the end of the day, it, it, it's just, and I'm, I don't, it's just so much like Far Cry 4 and Far Cry 3. Um, and that's not a great thing? Uh, I, I, I thought I would say that, yes, it's an amazing thing, but I fucking love Far Cry 3, and I got to Far Cry 4, and it was literally Far Cry 3 with a different skin. And gyrocopters, and, and it was in the Himalayas. I was so excited about it. I played, you know, maybe halfway through the game and never finished it, right? Um, because it wasn't different enough. Whereas Blood Dragon was so radically different. And, and I don't, I, I don't. I mean, even things that are a lot of fun, even even delicious foods, get old after a while. Sure, if you you know what I mean. And so, I, I I'm not 100 percent sure where I'm at. I want to see more footage. I love the concept. I love where they are, but if it's too close to the other ones. I, I don't know. I may not. It may not suck me in. I'm not sure. I would love to make a joke about sucking you in, but <laughs> let's just stop. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we are in the clubhouse, and Brett. Before we get into the topic this week, yes. we have a poll from last week. Yes, we do. Uh, we were talking, of course, uh, last week. One of the one of the many stories we talked about was the dying light expansion and the expanding price point for the dying light expansion. If you don't, if you don't buy into it soon enough. And I asked the question, was the announcement regarding dying lights expansion, a consumer friendly move? And we've had, is this three weeks in a row now that we've had a tie in the poll? Uh, that's weird. It's kind of like when I you flip a coin. Have. Yeah, the likelihood that you'll get ten heads in a row each time. The likelihood is the same. This you're is get statistically heads. significant, is what we're saying. <laughs> That's right. In last place, with twenty eight percent of the vote, was the view I espoused, which was is, is not in the least a consumer friendly move. This was a limited time sale scheme to sell more copies, but tied for the number one answer with thirty six percent each is definitely they were transparent about what was happening and why. And then the other answer was people still play Dying Light. <laughs> so I, I enjoyed that answer. Yes. Yes. It's a fun game. It's a really fun game. Uh, but anyway, thank you very much for uh, for voting in that poll and for voicing your thoughts on that. And, yes. of, and of course, uh, voicing your thoughts on Lauren's erroneous position vis-a-vis Star Wars Battlefront. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, not a ero- no, not erroneous at all. Everybody understands now. I had a very fun time reading. <laughs> Everybody understands now. All right. So, uh, what are we talking about this week? So, this week, Brent, we're going to talk about. Um, we've talked about this a little bit before, but now it's happened to me personally. Mm. So now it means it's important. <laughs> um, 
I want to talk about the, uh, the the state of the gaming industry, Brent, okay. and the kind the, the shenanigans. I call shenanigans, Brent. Okay. Um, I'll go get specifically, off the hang on. Specifically, uh, so the article we're linking to is actually IGN's review of Just Cause Three, specifically for the Xbox One and PlayStation Four. Mm-hmm. Um, the game Just Cause Three, which I played this week, um, I, I may end up talking about my playing of it here. Uh, it's also on the the list for the road, but we'll see how that goes. But uh, the game came out on December first. I did pick up the game on PlayStation Four. Um, review embargo was November thirtieth. Uh, IGN wrote a review, gave the game an eight point zero on November thirtieth. Uh, uh, they had a review copy from the PC, like almost all other outlets yeah. did. Almost all the footage we've seen of the game has been on PC. Eight point zero sounds like a pretty good score, Lauren. It does sound like a pretty good score. And then the game came out, and it's fucking broken. <laughs> <laughs> on the con what, on both the PlayStation, what happened to the 8.0? Uh, on the PlayStation and the Xbox One, yeah. and so three days later, IGN went back, which I've seen other sites do. I've never seen IGN do it, but maybe they did. Yeah. IGN went back and created a separate review just for the Xbox One and PlayStation versions, and gave it a 5.9. Mm, now, funny how the, that works. The, the review is not what, what I necessarily want to talk about. Whether or not you agree with the practice of doing that, you're welcome to obviously sound off on that. But but what I want to talk about, Brent, is is um, a couple of things. The, just Cause Three is 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 fucking broken. I mean, I can't believe uh, how bad of a shape the game is in with uh, two basic things that are broken about it on the consoles. Right. Uh, one of them is the frame rate, which they their target was thirty frames per second. Uh, they failed to meet that target. That was only uh, the, that was the target. That was the target. They failed to meet that target horridly. Well, that's that's uh, a fail right there. In a game whose entire premise is just you blowing shit up, yeah. uh, which is the fun part of the game, as soon as you start blowing shit up, the, the frames dip to what must be 10 frames per second. That's bad. Um, which discour- If you read Dan Stapleton's review, and it's a reason that I linked to it here, um, it, it's an excellent, excellent um, description of sort of the experience of playing the game. It fundamentally changes how you interact with the game because you don't want to do crazy shit because you can't see uh, what's going on. And then also, uh, to me, the biggest, the single biggest problem, the load times in the game were frequently, and I mean frequently, between two and five minutes apiece. What? Um, and and most they, annoyingly... Well, wait, now, wait. Did they have mini games on their load screens? They did not. Okay, well, they then that's not. unforgivable. That's right. Most annoyingly, Brent, so the game is set up, uh, as you could imagine, uh, the way Just Cause would be like many of the open world games. You basically go... The whole fun of this game, the story's funny, the writing is better this time, mm. um, and the characters are actually funny, but basically the fun of the game is flying around in the wingsuit and parachute and then blowing the shit out of stuff creatively yeah. in these different towns. And um, along the way, you have these, and when you liberate a town, uh, all of a sudden you get these challenges that open and up. And by liberate, we mean liberate the town from the infrastructure they have come to rely upon. That is exactly right. <laughs> um, and when you do, you get these challenges that open up, like, you know, for the wingsuit challenges or airplane challenges or helicopter challenges. And in doing those challenges, you earn gears, and you use those gears to, to upgrade your equipment. So yeah. it's fundamental to the sort of loop of, uh, you know, upgrading your equipment. Mm-hmm. When you do these challenges, you can imagine they're just straight challenges. You, you go to this little, like, spot on the ground, and you hit start challenge, and then suddenly you're in a helicopter uh, way high above the ground, and you're doing a wingsuit challenge. Okay. And inevitably, you fuck it up the first time as you learn the course, so you want to hit retry and start again. And when you're doing a challenge like that, so there's a load screen when you go into the challenge, which let, you would expect. Let me guess. Every time you hit retry, it's a two- to three-minute oh, load time. That's, and, and that's, it makes, that's it, bad. That's it, bad. It, makes it, it, it makes it unplayable to the point that you're like, fucking, I don't want to do the challenges. So now you're killing the feedback loop of upgrading your equipment. And you also, again, you're so... And it's not just there. It's literally everywhere. Yeah. It's everywhere the load screens are. And so you're not... Uh, again, Dan Stapleton talks about how you don't want to... You're so worried about dying in the game because the load screens are so long that you don't do crazy shit. But this game is entirely about doing crazy shit. Yeah, so, so it kind of sabotages itself. So, Brent, what I want to talk... And so it's just fucking broken. It's, like, unplayable. And I have since learned... Somebody told me if you turn off your network connection on your PlayStation... So I have to actually turn off the connection to the internet on my PlayStation. Okay. It makes it almost playable. Almost. Um, which is... And it's tremendous fun when it can be fun. But So the game is just fucked. And, and uh, so there's a couple pieces to this. This happened with Arkham Knight. Uh, there's a t- couple things that are different from Arkham Knight. Number one, this happened to me. Uh, and as I said before, uh, no, <laughs> which is why we're talking about. But number two, the, the thing that the thing that baffles me more than anything, <laughs> the thing I, I got to be honest, the thing that baffles me more than anything is how do you fuck this up like this on closed architecture? Right. 
I do not understand. It, it is rather it is rather interesting that the PC release is the one that's actually really good this time. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. I like I can almost understand. Okay, you outsource it to a separate company right. and you fucked it up on a PC where everybody's shit is different. Not 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 acceptable by any stretch of the imagination. But how you fuck it up on the closed hardware like a PS4 or an Xbox like that, and you don't know it when you're releasing it, which they clearly did because everything they gave out was PC review copies, yeah. and everything they showed was PC review copies yeah, cl- or PC copies. Clearly, clearly they knew that their their console development was lagging. So, Brent, Pardon I the just pun. <laughs> so I just want to ta- I want to talk about like a couple of things. One yes. of them is I, I honestly feel like. Uh, and, and I don't, I don't want to be overly melodramatic here, and I think this might come across that way. But I feel like this is this, the, the sort of straw that might have broken the camel's back for me, and in a way, taken a piece of my childhood. <laughs> and again, okay. not to be overly melodramatic, but there are precious few things in this world that I look forward to with the glee of a 10-year-old kid waiting to open his Christmas presents the next morning. And video games are, are some of the few things that, that give me... The, the ability to feel that way. I'm really glad you said video games because for a second I thought it was going to be leopard print thong underwear. No, no, it wasn't. And, uh, um, but well, that's a, that's a different show, actually. Yeah. Uh, but video games sometimes can elicit that kind of feeling from me as a grown, a 43 year old man. Yes. And I feel like uh, just cause, just cause, an avalanche. Avalanche is a developer that I have trusted, uh, that have put out good products. And Just Cause is a property that that was theirs to fuck up. They had such a good game in Just Cause 2 that all they had to do was remake the game almost. And that's all my expectations were. Literally, that's all my expectations were. Mm -hmm. And so I thought there was no chance they could fuck this up. Uh, And they did. They fucked it up. Uh, And so now, and I know it's not so much the conversation about pre-orders, Brent, but it feels like it's it's almost not possible for me to look forward to a game anymore. Yeah, because I have, I have, I'm at the point now where I feel like I've utterly lost faith in our industry's ability to put out a product that is, uh, that that I can reliably expect to be working when I go to play it, and that's disappointing to me. Yeah, it it, it is interesting to kind of think about that. Um, like I feel like we've almost gotten to the point where it's a pattern now, where where it's almost industry standard. I don't know. I, I don't know if I feel like it's a pattern. I, I mean. Batman Arkham Knight, this... I'm trying to think of, like, what else has come out this year that's been, like, fundamentally broken at launch. Arkham Knight. I, I said Arkham Knight. I know, I just felt like it needed to be mentioned again. <laughs> you just wanted to say something else to make it appear that there was more than two games. Well, I don't know. <laughs> and the thing, I mean, there, may be, there may be other games. These are just the two that are coming to mind right now. That There may be a litany of other games that I'm just not thinking of. But the point that I'm making is that it is interesting to sort of think about, like, I, I saw something, and I can't remember what it was now, but I was watching something. It's been since last week's show, and somebody was saying something to the effect of gamers almost being, you know, like, programmed to be cynical at this point, or, like, cynical by default, something like that. And I was thinking about that and, and thinking, if it, you know, whether or not I, I agreed with that, and, and that's the thing that I'm kind of getting from you is it, you're kind of talking about like you feel like you've crossed some line in the sand into you know feeling like so cynical like like you just can't trust any game to to be good like you can't trust a game to come out and just work and i feel like on the one hand and i've certainly heard that you know from you know, we've heard that from people inside the industry and on the one hand i say if that's true the game industry is what's made gamers that cynical but at the same time i wonder about like well why does the game industry do it like you know like why why does the game industry release you know these broken games and things like that and um, it's because of gamers it's because we buy it no matter what and um and you know it's just uh it it like it seems like there is this almost unhealthy thing going on between gamers and developers that is creating the situation that nobody's all that happy with. And like in the case of, well, like in the case of just cause three, what uh, you said that the really bad reviews for the console stuff came out on December 3rd and the game launched on December 1st, if I'm not mistaken, right? Correct. Yep. So this is your fault is the bottom line. 
you did not wait for the sixth day edition like you were supposed to, and you got no, burned. I don't just dis- I don't disagree with you, Brent, I, and I think that. Uh, it, it's. I mean, uh, it's. It saddens me honestly yeah. that I can't like look forward to a game and get excited about it, and then go buy it on day one. But I feel like, and part of the excitement, part of the excitement of a video game sometimes is to be there on day one and to be talking about totally. it when everybody's talking totally. about it. And, and I feel nobody like nobody wants it, to go see Star Wars: The Force Awakens. Like nobody's looking forward to seeing Star Wars: The Force Awakens a week after it comes out. Right. You know? That's exactly nobody's right. Looking and forward I, to that. And well, I am, but I'm hoping it'll be my fifth time at that point. But yeah, exactly. Um, that's exactly right. And I feel like now it's gotten to the point. You know, Rocksteady again, like uh, uh, an IP and a studio that uh, I totally trusted would have trusted to put out a quality product. And 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 I know it's a Warner Brothers game, and it was another studio that did the port and all that. But yeah. it's a Rocksteady game, and and I and, and then again to have this happen from Avalanche, I, I I I'm not sure. I mean, I certainly goddamn don't trust Ubisoft. I certainly don't trust EA anymore. Warner Brothers hey, is out the like, window you now. You like the new Assassin's Creed, you know? So Ubisoft didn't they they did, and they haven't totally ruined it for you yet. Uh, they have not totally ruined it for me. Yet. No, just I'm not saying that they never put out a decent game, right? But every in every case, these they have put out games that are shitty and broken. Yeah, um, it's ju- true. just like Assassin's Creed Unity was sh- fundamentally shitty and broken. Um, uh, Warner Brothers now, Screenix, uh, in the case of and Avalanche Studios. And it seems like these studios that produce high-quality products like Rocksteady and Avalanche can't push back enough against the publisher to actually even be allowed to put out a game that is complete at this point. Now, that's, an, so, that's an interesting point. That's a, that's a very interesting point. Is Because the, the thing that I was kind of saying a, a minute ago is like, uh, or, or what I was sort of like, you know, going to lead into was this whole thing of like, well, you know, why do they set these arbitrary release dates and then just go for it? And it's like, look, you know, if it's not ready, then that's fine that it's not ready. But you know, don't announce like the release date two years out and then find out you're not ready. And I'm like, well, you know, it's like gamer demand. They're like, you know, all oh, gamers are frothing at the mouth for this new game. We got to get it out the door. But and, and that that could play a part in it. I, like, I'm not saying that that's not uh, that's not a market force. But uh, what the publisher wants the developer to do, as far as a timetable. Which, I mean, obviously, you know, is expense for them. I mean, the longer development goes on, the more money it costs them. Uh, you know, so, you know, they they want to, you know, they want to cut things off at some point. But, uh, you know, certainly, like, pressure from the publisher to get the game done in a certain amount of time and released on a certain day. And when you're trying, you know, like, when you're in the like, a very, very competitive industry, where no matter what size studio you are, you're going up against... You know, like, you know, whoever, you know, is developing the Call of Duty game that year and like EA Dice and, you know, those kinds of those kinds of outfits, no matter what size studio you are, you've got to compete at the highest level. Um, It's it's not maybe such a mysterious thing that that these games don't get all the time that they need to to come out and not be broken. I mean, all, all the time that they you know, there's a difference between all the time that they need. They might not be able to put on the features they want. But to like fundamentally not be playable, yeah. which was the case with Just Cause, and um, and I know there's people. I think Aberjam is, you know, he's not having this issue, and I don't know how he's not having this issue. I think he's also the one who suggested turning off your Wi-Fi. Yeah. But there are pages and pages and pages and pages and pages, and then they of course have the fucking balls to say things like, "We understand that some of you were experiencing problems," as opposed to, "We understand we put out a product that doesn't work because there is no way we didn't know that." when we tested this game and released it on 45 different PS4s, you know, like there's, there's no way they didn't know it. It's just, it, it, it's, I feel like I, for me, that line has been crossed where now uh, the only safe way to buy a game is to buy it a week after release until it's been, I mean, I even knew about this game. I bought this game the night before it was released. I waited for the review scores. Mm-hmm. Um, I knew that people had said there were, so, that there might be some frame rate slowdowns um, and some potential load time issues the the night before the game was out but it was few and far between and so it was kind of that like oh there might be some issues but it doesn't sound like it's that big of a deal and i needed to wait two or three days to find out the truth till all the news outlets got their hands on the final on, version on the final version until people got their hands on the final version and so now i feel like I, I, the only legitimate way to buy a game six day edition is, is to buy a six day edition which mm-hmm. to me is a big fuck you because it takes away a big part of what's fun about the industry. Yeah. I mean, imagine, and I can't think of any other fucking entertainment industry 
that works the same way where like, I mean, imagine if like a movie came out and you had to wait until a week after it came out to see if it was actually going to play on the projector right. <laughs> or if you were going to buy a book or an album that it would work when you load it on your Kindle or put it in, you know, put it on your iPhone or that you actually got the entire th- like It just, there's no other, anything like it. And I understand video games are unique, but it just makes me feel like as an industry, we don't know what the fuck we're doing. Uh, I, I, I know, man. Like I, I certainly, I certainly can understand your frustration and, you know, so, sometimes it does feel that way. Sometimes it feels like, you know, the industry is making really fundamental mistakes that uh, we, we, we don't have to make. And I don't, I mean, like in the past, I've chalked it up to growing pains and saying, you know, like, you know, it's just, it's an industry that, you know, is, is still young and finding its footing and all that. And I, and I don't know, you know, that, that may eventually prove out, you know, but it'll take decades to find out, I guess, if, if that was in fact the case. But, uh, but right now, today, I think that, the industry needs to have pressure put on it to stop this practice. And the only thing that I can think of that works is the six day edition, not pre-ordering the game and not buying the game until you find out whether or not it's going to work. And if it doesn't work, don't buy it. Uh, because, you know, unfortunately, you know, they, they get the money, whether you know whether the game works or not, you know once you've given them the money, you know they've got the money, and it 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 feels like uh, if we're not if if we're not willing to if we're not willing to sort of uh, incentivize them to change their practices, they're not going to change their practices. I agree with you, and it and it, it 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 makes me a little sad. But can I still buy Star Citizen? <laughs> Too late for me. Right, guys, we are going to hit the road and talk about some of the games that we have been playing this past week. I'll kick it over to Lauren to uh, start us off. Yeah, Brent, this is Lauren out in the... F- oh, wait a minute. No, sorry. We already <laughs> did that segment. Uh, yeah, so let me start off with Star Wars Battlefront. I did uh, play Star Wars Battlefront this week, Brent. I uh, paid $0.44 cents to get the Battle of Jakku DLC one week early. You could buy it off of CD keys. It was worth the $0.44 cents to me. Um, okay. Continuing to enjoy it, although a very weird thing happened, which is that I don't know if the if the Jakku DLC somehow broke the servers, but it's nearly impossible to find a game right now uh, on PC. Okay. And there's there's these weird numbers, these sites that uh, not weird. There's these sites that read the numbers of how many players are playing simultaneously on Steam. And right now, the numbers have been saying the last several days uh, high of twenty two thousand people at any one time on PC, which is nothing. A- uh, and frequently ten thousand or twelve thousand people playing worldwide, which is an incredibly low amount, yeah, that, but that, I, I was going to say that that does not seem like it's enough. No, assuming and a total of a hundred thousand across all three platforms, w- when they have sold like hundred thousand at the highest point uh, any on any given day, yeah. um, which doesn't seem like a ton. But um, I've been really struggling to find matches. But when I find them, I'm having a ton of fun. The Jakku map is uh, awesome, and I'm I'm hoping I'm looking forward to more free DLC and if it can keep a player base. Uh, to seeing what comes out, like when things like Cloud City and the Death Star come out, but uh, still playing Fingers it, still crossed. having fun. Yes, that's right. Um, what about you, Brent? What did you play? Uh, Metal Gear Solid Five. Still playing it, still having Never fun. Of uh, one of the most interesting birthday well wishes I got last week was from Metal Gear Solid Five, and um, from the game itself. From the game itself. And I, I, I tell you, I'm Gear kicking Solid myself. Five. I'm kicking myself right now because I didn't. Uh, I. I I didn't record it or yeah, I mean like the PlayStation re- records everything, but I fucked up and double tapped the button where I meant to single tap the share button and I lost the recording. But anyway, the point is I did a mission. I finished the mission. I'm back in the helicopter afterwards and Miller comes on the radio and he's like, you know, boss, we need you back at base right now. It's urgent. And then it just goes to like, you know, like it goes to a black screen and the helicopter round zooms across the stereo spectrum. And the next thing I know I'm landing at mother base. It's a cut scene. Boss gets out of the chopper and nobody's around. And he's, you know, he's kind of walking like, all right, I thought it was urgent. Like, you know, where's everybody? Then all of a sudden you start hearing pop, 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 pop. And he pulls out his handgun and, uh, and then people just start appearing and they've got, you know, it's like fireworks and stuff. And, it's it's everybody and they threw the you base, a birthday party and there's like a big you know happy birthday cake and uh and the, the 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 characters who are still at mother base without 
spoiling anything too serious. But the characters who are still at Mother Base uh, come out and uh, and wish you a happy birthday, and they sing a song and and all that. So yes, Metal Metal Gear Solid. That 5. is the most awesome thing I have ever heard. Metal Gear Solid Five threw me a birthday party. <laughs> that is fucking awesome. I'll dude. have to wait until next year to, to 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 try and capture it again. That is awesome. It's I, I have to tell you, it, it was actually I was kind of like, wow, this is actually really cool. Like I've never had a game you know do this before, and uh, I, that's not to say that there's not another game that's done it. It's just that I've not experienced it. But uh, yeah, it was uh, it was a pretty neat little thing. That is very cool. So that's it. All right. Uh, other games I played, Brent, Just Cause Three. I well, talked you tried about to play Just Cause Three. Yeah, it's fucking broken. But I will say. Uh, which I didn't say uh, up in the previous segment that when I have been able to play it, I've really enjoyed it, yeah. and it is just like Just Cause two point oh, two point oh. It's an it's an improvement on on Just Cause two, but it's essentially the same thing: more grappling, more blowing shit up, more wingsuit, which and all of which are just absolutely awesome. Yeah. So I can't wait to actually get to be able to play the game seamlessly because there there were a couple times when I was able to, and my loading times were thirty seconds or less. Uh, and it fun- completely changed the game and made it just just tons of fun. Mm. So um, I'm hoping to get to have more fun with it in the future if I don't pull my hair out first. Good luck with that. Yep. Uh, and then lastly, Brett, you know, oddly, I don't have a lot to say about this, but I downloaded, I because I bought the Nathan Drake collection, I got to play, I get to play the Uncharted 4 multiplayer beta uh, ahead of time. And I downloaded it and I played it for about 20 minutes uh, on the first day and I have not played it since. Um, really? I remember that I did this with Uncharted 3 or Uncharted 2. I can't remember which one it was, but one of the two of them. I got in the multiplayer beta and just wasn't feeling it. You know, when I was just in the beta playing it, I barely played it, but I really enjoyed the multiplayer once I actually got the game. Um, and so I don't know if it's the repetitiveness of, of uh, um, having the same map over and over, but whatever. I mean, I will get back into it a couple more times and maybe uh, talk about it a little bit more next week, but I uh, didn't really play it very much. Right. Oh well, I guess I don't know. I mean, like I was trying to remember, like you know, which whichever one of one of those games it was that you know you didn't play, and I mean, I it did. What do you mean? Uh, which one of the games I didn't play? The, the betas, I mean, like you know, whichever like the multiplayer. Betas, oh yeah, you know, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it didn't. I don't think that it it affected your overall appreciation for the uh, for the multiplayer once. The no, game no, it didn't, and I, I don't think it's indicative of it being bad. Although I will say, I did enjoy. Uh, if I recall, I enjoy the multiplayer. Uh, better in Uncharted 2, actually, than I did. Uh, and I played more of it in Uncharted 2 than I did in Uncharted 3. But whatever. Yeah. Those games are... I did, too. I play the multiplayer, and I enjoy them. But it's 100% about the single player in those games for me. Right. All right. Well, let's go ahead and uh, ride into the sunset, Lauren. Uh, what do you uh, What do you got for us this week? Yeah, I couldn't not put this in here, Brent. One of our listeners uh, posted a video for a game that he worked on a f- couple of years ago that never made it into production. Yeah. And I don't know if you've seen if you saw this or not, Brent. I did not. But it is a, uh, it's the thing, is what it is. Hey, I'm all about that. It is the thing, and it's a dope video, and I would like them to please make this into a video game. It was awesome. It was done in Unreal Engine 4. Uh, He said that they put this together in a month uh, to try and secure backing from a different publisher once the initial publisher, which was Universal, uh, dropped out. And uh, I, I don't believe they ever ended up getting it, but it, the, the trailer is awesome, and it made me just think how awesome a thing game would be. And it came from one of our very own listeners, so check it out. That is, that's very, very cool. You know, there actually was there actually was a, a PC game. I have, maybe it was on console too. I can't remember. It's been it's been a long time now. It seems like maybe ten years or more. But uh, there was like a, a thing game that they made that was kind of a it was kind of a sequel to the, the the Carpenter film. You know, it was like chronologically set after that and everything. And I've al- I've always thought that you know they could do something really really cool with that as a video game. And but I mean, yeah, that that demo that demo is like boss. It's very very cool. Yes, indeed. All right, what do you got for us this week, Brandon? Into the sunset. Uh, well, maybe, maybe the one present I said I didn't get any presents for uh, for my birthday, but I'm actually kind of lying because the present I got is that uh, Cartoon Network announced that Samurai Jack is coming back uh, next year. It's going to be part of the Adult Swim lineup. Gindy Tartakovsky is uh, is going to be working on it, and I could not be more excited. If you've never seen it, Samurai Jack is one of the greatest animated series of all time. I believe there's 52 episodes that they made back. I don't know. It's been, again, it's probably been a decade at this point, but um, Samurai Jack was an incredible animated series 
that uh, that starred Phil Lamar as the enigmatic Jack, and then of course Mako as Aku, the shape shifting master of darkness. Uh, which actually I named uh, I, I named one of my cats after. But anyway. Uh, the point is that Samurai Jack is awesome, and uh, it's been on hiatus for a really long time, and it's coming back now, and I could not be more excited. Of course, unfortunately, Mako is uh, is dead. He died, I don't know how many years ago now, but uh, but he, he, he's, been, uh, he's been deceased for some time, so they're going to have to do something else uh, for that role, but it will be very interesting to see if they use this opportunity to finally bring Jack's story to some sort of, uh, some sort of conclusion. All right, there you go. I'm not familiar with that series, and now I want to check it out. Yeah, you, you ought to. Samurai Jack is the bomb. All right. Our ride along this week, Brent, as we head out in the sunset, comes from listener Erroneous, who says, a shout-out to Double Fine Psychonauts 2 Fig Campaign. Oh, yeah? Fig Campaign is kind of like a, uh, a Kickstarter, but a little bit different. Okay. Um, and he links to the Fig Campaign. Not, but not only a shout-out to the game itself, which, ne- which needs to happen off course. Of course. Which needs to happen, of course. Or a shout out to the awesome backer investor video feature Tim Schaefer, Gabe Newell, Peter Chan, Eric Wolpaw, and Jack Black did. Yeah, it's actually really awesome. You should check out the video. But he also wants to know what you think of using Fig as a platform. For those who don't know it on Fig, you can back it Kickstarter style, only get rewards, but you can also invest in the game. So, uh, Brent, first of all, a shout out to the Psychonauts 2 uh, campaign. I think they're looking for about $3 million yeah. uh, is what they're looking for. They have about a month or so left. Uh, for gathering the funds. So if you're interested in funding a Psychonauts 2, uh, make sure to check this out. Also, um, as for FIG as a platform, Brent, I don't know if you you took the time and went and looked at, at sort of how the investment works and what the return on investment is. I'm familiar with FIG. Like, like I read about it a little bit when they first launched. So the description that I can tell is if you invest something like, if you invest $500, you're likely to make about $2. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you invest about like fifty thousand, you're likely to make a thousand or something like that. Yeah, um, it's not. So it's not a very compelling. It's not a very compelling argument. Yeah, I, I, think, I think I uh, think I'd rather invest like the twenty five dollars and just get the game. Right. It's it's. Uh, I I think like for you to make a thousand dollars, they would have to sell something like three million copies. Um, right. Which, it, to put in perspective, I think you know. Um, Tim Schafer is very candid, which I thought was very cool in the video talking about the sales for Psychonauts. Mm-hmm. And how it sold four hundred thousand initially in its initial run, uh, and then he revived it on Steam several years later and sold an additional, I think it was a million copies or nine hundred thousand copies. Right. So, in its t- lifespan, it sold a total of one point something million copies. But um, well, that's so I'm not that's sure. That's the kind I mean, of frankness think- you have to have when people are quote unquote investing in your game. Yeah, no, I think it was fantastic, and I think I love Tim Shaper's videos, and he s- seems very upfront about what he's doing. That's the way to go. Uh, but as an investment platform, you know, I think it's a cool idea that you could invest instead of just get the rewards, but, uh, you know, I don't know what the likelihood of really truly making any return on investment is there. I'm curious about the likelihood of people actually doing it. Yeah, that's a true story. All right, Brent. And with that, I think we're going to call it a show. Yep. As usual, we want to hear what you guys think about everything we talked about this week, whether it's Samurai Jack, the Thing demo that uh, one of our listeners posted, which is awesome, Uncharted 4 multiplayer beta, Just Cause 3, Metal Gear Solid 5, Star Wars Battlefront, uh, what we talked about up in the clubhouse, which is uh, the, I, I would like to call it a trend. I don't, Brent's not quite there yet, uh, with uh, the industry releasing broken games, uh, big AAA titles at that. Uh, also, what we talked about up in the garage, Far Cry Primal, Star Citizen, the Telltale version of Batman coming to a game console near you, uh, and the Game Awards 2015, as well as Sony offering a 12-month PlayStation Now package for $100. We want to hear what your thoughts are on all of that and anything else related to gaming. As usual, he is Brent Adams. I am Lauren Baumgarten. And remember, you don't stop playing because you get old. You get old because you stop playing.